Welcome back to What Are Tea Noobs with General Disturbance. This is a Barasque. It's a tier 8 French premium medium tank. It's located on the south spawn of Siegfried Line. And this one is under the command of Palmer 98 of the FA1 clan. Which you can see straight at the start, that 105mm main barrel is actually carrying two marks of excellence already. And the standard reload for this gun is 21.4 seconds, but Palmer's got it down to 19.75, and he's about to have a very big game. Now, it's a cross between a batch at 12 tonne, that's the hull, and the turret, well, that's supposed to be the 105 turret from the EBR 105. But uh, no, this tank never existed. It's a piece of fiction by Wargaming. A nice idea, but uh, it's rough OP. And uh, quite a few people have bought them. When it first came out, it was actually really, really OP. Oh, he's got his first kill. That VK got tracked at just the wrong moment. And he, well, he put two rounds in. Now it's capable of doing 720 with two shots, or sorry, 720. Uh, yes, it is 720. It's actually 360 for each shot. And then, of course, it's got a long reload. A multi-shot autoloader. Well, he's firing into that bush because he thinks there's somebody, might be somebody in there. You don't carry a whole lot of ammunition in this uh, tank. So it's only 36 rounds in total. So you have to be careful you don't waste any ammo because you might need it later on during the game. And then your only option will be to try and sideswipe an enemy tank to take them out. And I've seen players do that deliberately to take out enemy tanks. They'll drive up to them at high speed and just at the last second they turn so that the rear of their vehicle goes slamming into the side of the enemy and spins them around. And that actually can kill enemy tanks without killing yourself in the process. Oh dear. Our M4A376 just got killed and we got spotted and uh, he just pulled away in time but he did get uh, seen and you can see shells are hitting the ground near him so he's managed to get out of uh, range of them temporarily so we've got enemy in the rear and unfortunately they're going after our RT he's only got the single kill so far and remember, that's the only kill on his team. Well, yeah, it's a very low tank, so going over the hedgehogs can be quite difficult. Well, it appears that uh, our Hummel managed to see off one of the enemy. Oh, there you go. There's, well, there's one shot, and there's the kill shot. So two kills now. We did lose the Hummel. The AMX 1375 got him. I'm in your debt. The 1375, as you may know, is the 13-ton uh, tank with the 75mm gun that was made, um, well, quite a lot of them were made, actually, nearly 7,000 in total. And a lot of them then converted later on into 90mm and 105mm tanks. Now, yes, he did get another kill. He took out the ELC Ever 90, who didn't really reckon on him getting a reload and being able to shove another round in. But so far, he has three of the four kills on his team, and they're down by three. Can he get a shot into that guy? No. Well, the dispersion on the shell is such that if you did fire at long range through a narrow gap, you more than likely wouldn't hit it. But yeah, he can get that one in every day. And it is a list as well, so he pumps the second one in, but he doesn't get the kill because it's not enough. The list did fire back, rather frustratedly, you might say. I don't think we're worried about the strip. He's hiding behind the bunker at the moment, but that this, we can take him out with the next mag if he stays where he is. He's looking at us, but he can't see us. Yeah, that shell looks, that gun barrel looks like it's going in our direction, but he obviously can't see us. And he tried to fire, but missed. So I don't think we're spotted now. And he's going up high. So he can spot all the enemy. He's now got a better angle on the list. If the guy turns a little further side on, he might be able to get that one through. He's actually selecting the APCR. Fires his first round in. 
Okay, he's reloading again. I don't think those shells actually did him any bonus. Use the intuition to change the shell. Don't worry about the reload when it um, um, symbols when he is in a, a full reload using intuition because it will be shorter than the standard. Okay, we can see the list. We've got to get rid of this guy. Oh, and he does. And now he needs to get rid of this strip with just one shot. Can he? Yeah, no problem. That's his fifth kill. I told you he's going to have a big game. Okay, so he's going to make for the gap now because he doesn't want to go flying as he goes over those. Well, his teammates aren't having a really good day in the um, in the town, but this chariot here is about to have a very bad day. Oh, we did that one. Oh dear, oh dear, that wasn't good, but he's now closing on the bush, mainly because his angle um, it gets less. The chance that the charioteer might fall back and see him is uh, is less the closer he is to the bush. But one round should be enough. There you go. That's his top gun. Okay, so we can see an OI in the distance. But I think we're way outside that OI's view range, and it's somebody else on our team, the Skoda, who's actually spotting him. Okay, so we're going to pump these rounds in. Try and go for the rear, and that one here. And yes, it killed the OI. So he's now got seven kills. He's one short of getting a Radley's, but there's only two left on his team. The Skoda, who's helping him by spotting, and him. So now he's um, he's kind of handicapped. What he can do is go up the other end, take out the enemy RT, and that's certainly going to help him because he's not going to get suddenly ambushed by shells raining down on top of him and to get spotted. The enemy is going to be a bit uh, cautious about pulling outside the uh, town because I think they will notice that they've been seen. <laughs> that's a very inconvenient leap. And unfortunately, we just lost the uh, Skoda. That's one or seven. There's one. And there's the kill. So we were a one on five. If he wins this, he gets a collar panel. He'll also, because <laughs> that's his Radleys when he just got killed with Panzer Fiat Schmelton. If he gets the next four kills, he's going to get 12 kills. He'll not only pick up a pool's medal, but he will also, uh, well, he comes closer. Oh, yes, thank you very much. That's obvious one. He popped the reload straight away. The S51 knew where his W key was, but he didn't have any protection. And he just happened to come across the guy. And now he's found the SU-8, but he did get spotted by the Rudy behind him. And now he's been shotgunned, but he can take this guy out at leisure since the reload goes through. And now he's got a Pascucci's medal to go with the rest. And that happens to be the pools as well. So, he's still in it, but he's only got one shell left. There you go. And he gets that one in, but he's now in reload. The Rudy's still coming on. He doesn't want to take a round, but he's got plenty of hit points spare. So he's toying with the, the Rudy at the moment. Not deliberately, but he's just trying to waste time till he gets the reload in. Then he'll finish the Rudy off. And he's got another one coming towards him, a Govica. So he's decided to take on the, the Rudy, gets rid of him. He's only got one round, so he's going to use the Rex for cover. And then, thank you very much, one shell. Oh! Oh no! It actually hit the um, the lower plate and it didn't go in. So now it's him versus the Govica to win the game. He will pick up a bunch of medals, a whole handful of them if he wins this, but it, the Govica's got full health. And of course, he's got a very big gun as well, which can do a lot of damage. So it's going to be a case of, he's going to have to pop out suddenly, and the Govica can't work out which way we're going to do it. But if we manage to pull away from the Govica, and we can nail him at a distance, because he won't have our view range, and that will handicap him. Hello, there's one. So two more like that, and we've got him, but he knows we're going to be in reload the moment we fire the second shell. So we could pop the reload straight away. He's fired into the build, into the wreck. Now we get behind him. Now he's trapped. And thank you very much. 
That's one. Now just keep him. Oh, that wrecks a bit of a problem. But he can outspeed him and he gets him with the next shot after the reload. And that is a victory for Palmer 98. Well, that was a rather amazing battle by Palmer 98 of FA1 in the Barask. He managed to get an ace tanker, unsurprisingly, considering the number of enemy tanks that he took down. He also got a fire for effect for doing more damage than the hit points of his own vehicle. Bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, he got 14. He got a pulse medal for taking out at least 10 enemy tanks. In fact, he took out 12. So many that I have to scroll the page to get them all in sight because the Govica is below the line. And uh, he also picked up a Pascucci's medal for killing both enemy SPGs, a Kolobanov's medal for standing alone against at least five enemy tanks. And the Skoda died just at the moment that he came across the Schmaltern. And if it had been a, a little while longer, if he'd lasted a little while longer, we wouldn't have got the Kolobanovs at all. But yes, he did get the Kolobanov. He also got a high caliber for dealing the most damage in the game and the Top Gun for getting at least six kills. His winning that battle 17,923, which is Super Unicum and a lot, lot more. Let's have a look at Team Score. Well, yeah, it's not really surprising considering the amount of damage he did in the battle. There are not many players who actually managed to uh, get high scores. In fact, he's the only player who managed to get over 2,000 hit points. You can see that Palmer managed to get uh, 6,558. Second highest was the G2 SP with 1,652. And third place goes to that Rudy, 1,428. When it came to kills, he got 12. So there was only three other players on his team who actually managed to get kills in that game. And the next highest was the Rudy, who managed three kills. Two kills went to the Charioteer, the Panzerfeer Schmaltern, and the AMX 1375. The Schmaltern got a Leather Slaves medal in that game uh, because he was a tier six tank in a tier eight game. And yes, so he was actually killing higher tier opponents. When it came to base XP, he's just below the 2,000 mark. 1,929 went to Palmer. The next highest after that was not a member of his own team. It was actually the Rudy Polish on the enemy team who got 634, followed by the T-78 on his own team with 564. He fired 31 rounds. Now, remember, this tank only has 36 rounds in total. 31 rounds fired, 36. He had five spare at the end of the game. He got 25 direct hits on the enemy, 23 penetrations, 6,558 hit points of damage, of which 2,714 were at more than 300 meters. He received two hits from the enemy, both penetrated. I'm afraid the armor on this vehicle is not very good. Uh, it's very thin, actually. So it's why it can go so fast. But it's basically two light tanks that have been melded together and called a medium tank. It doesn't have medium tank armor. He did receive one hit by way of splash damage as well. He was shotgunned by the SU-8, who I think a bit panicked, really, when he saw the guy coming towards him. He thought, uh-oh, this is bad. And, yeah, he fired too far. He probably could have got a cleaner shot off if he'd auto-locked on and then let the guy get just a bit closer when he was stationary, like uh, standing, um, staring at um, a headlight, a rabbit staring a headlight in um, at night. Um... And he got four enemy vehicles spotted, 12 enemy vehicles damaged, 12 killed, and 346 hit points of damage assistance. On a premium count, he actually made a profit of 84,291 credits. His ammunition supply was quite high as well, but he was using premium ammo, uh, 60,000 credits for that alone. And uh, 3,182 experience points out of the game. That was quite a game uh, to get a 12 killed Koloban off. Um, and it's very, very impressive indeed. The Barask is a fun tank for those who know how to use it and can be a game winner. But to come back from the point that uh, they were at that particular point where uh, there was only a Skoda and him left, and then the Skoda got wiped out, uh, and he was out in the field while the rest of the enemy tanks, well, they were in the town. If those tanks had all made it to the cap quickly and, and gathered themselves together, then they could have protected each other from the, the what was going to happen. Well, the, the three tanks could have gone to the cap, but obviously the two arty were making their way 
or one of them was making their way, the SU rate wasn't. And uh, if they'd actually managed to get into the cap, they might have been able to stop the um, uh, Palmer from actually getting enough resets to actually keep the game alive. Because, of course, he, they, he would have had to have spotted them to actually shoot at them. And that means he would have also been seen by them and they would have been able to fire back at him. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that replay. If you did, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.